freeze you today, but welcome back to the Davy Brown 990 restoration. Those of you new, my name's Barry. Well, this is day three officially of stud extraction week. Um, where we're at at the minute, you've seen the video of day one. Day two was yesterday, which really wasn't a day. It was a couple hours in the afternoon with the grinder and that let's see if can you see can you guys see that let's have a look so i can see what you're looking at right that that is a tungsten tipped drill for drilling holes in ceramic tiles and yesterday i made a 0 0.2 a 200 thou dent in that tap with that um going straight down the middle uh, and I don't know, it started to lose its effectiveness and I think it was because simply of the amount of support down the tip. Now, Sunday morning I had ordered three of these little bad boys. These are tungsten tipped drills for steel though. Now, two seconds, be back. Right, I'm back. Yes, so these are not masonry bits. That is a masonry bit. What's the difference between that and that? The shape of the cutting edge. Not so much that one, because I've reshaped this one anyway, and I'm going to explain that to you in a minute. But the shape of the cutting edge. If you look at a masonry bit, it the edge is not shaped with the cutting edge here it's 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 more like that in the middle because it's a chisel that breaks up and clears stone rather than cuts stone a masonry bit doesn't drill stone it just smashes its way through it um this one see that is shaped for cutting metal because if you look at the shape of that, I'll put some pictures up of these, some close-up pictures of these, um, and I'll put a picture up of a masonry tip, and you'll see why they're different. But this masonry one, this is an old, you can tell, it's an old drill that I had. I reshaped the point on that, and I drilled in about 100 thou with that before it lost its edge. And then I went on to that one, which is the tile cutter and I got another 200 thou with that one and I think we're currently at something like 0.67 of an inch deep with into the tap with those two so this one is literally just turned up and that's what I've come out to give it a go for and um, I've got two more of these on order from a different company and uh, scheduled to arrive tomorrow so it's a reasonable day, it's a bit breezy, but it's reasonable. So I thought I'd come out and we'll give this bit a go here, see what's happening. Eh? Now, something else to show you. I'll put them, I'll put them two in my pocket and keep them safe. They're not expensive, but God, they're brittle. So, if you remember, I've got the steam cleaner fixed. I'll show you this. This is how effective steam is, and you all know this anyway. This is how effective steam is, it's shifting crap. So if you look at this, you see here, I've gotten all the paint off here. There's a little bit of muck left on here that I've missed. Look at that. Oh, that's heavy. In there, hitting it with a steam cleaner. Now the top of that, is rust that's rust that's not dirt that's rust it wants a damn good wire brushing which it'll get if you look down in there you'll see we're a good ways down now aren't we and we're going to hit it again with a six mil drill today see what we can get right so now some of you guys will be able to help me with as well on the back of this uh the output shaft the final drive shaft is another o-ring that i cannot find a part number for because it's not in the parts diagram so this is where it was when i took it to bits it's here see here this o-ring 
saw that o-ring I haven't measured it yet to be honest with you right there is an o-ring listed part number 10 on the eight on the Explorer diagrams book but when you look at it on the Explorer diagrams it would appear to come off the blanking cap off the other end, off the short end of the pin, the outside of the pinion. That's a cap. Goes on the outside of the pinion and it goes around that cap and seals the cap into that casting. If you look at the schedule list, part number 10, there's only two of, one for either side. Now, if that was the same as part number 10, then there would be four of, wouldn't there? And there isn't, there's only two. But I've, I've emailed Stuart and I've sent him a couple of pictures of that. Hopefully Stuart will be able to come back with what that is exactly. It might well be exactly the same as item number 10 in the schedule. Um, but it might not be. So if anybody knows what the part number is for that, or if it is in fact the same bit as number 10, which is the O-ring seal for the blanket cap for the end of the pinion shaft, Drop us a comment, let's know, man. Right, let's get some gear out. Let's have a bit of drilling done. Uh, um, I'll bring you back when we've had a success. <laughs> Hopefully. All right, back in a minute. Right, day five. As you can tell by the hat, it's bloody freezing cold. What a beautiful day, though. Let's have a Look at the blue sky. It's a beautiful day today, but having said that, it's cold, hence the coat and the hat. Right, so I say day five, stud extraction process still going on. Let's have a look and see where we're at, eh? So this is what we're down to. The Dremel with a diamond bowl burr on the end. I've got Various ones. Where's the other one gone? You can see there where I've gone down through the middle of the tap with the diamond burr. Now, how deep are we? Point nine eight eight. I've got a feeling this is a full length tap, it's going to be inch and a half, so I've got another half an inch to go down that lovely hole there. Um, so as you can see, we're quite a ways down, but we're getting there, we've got the top part cleaned. We just need to get rid of that. Now we're going to go in there with a piece of wire. Go down the back of that hole there. There's an obstruction there. Come to that front hole, see how much further it goes in. There's an obstruction in that flute and an obstruction in that flute. And I've got a feeling that was when he was back. I think he's gone in, tried to clean the thread out. The flutes have jammed up with crap. He's backed it out and has gone solid. And it's snapped off straight across the top of that casting. Now, earlier on in the video, you saw us with a tile cutter, um, a tungsten tip drill. Well, and I was going to take some pictures of them for you, wasn't I? Aye, that tungsten tip drill lasted about 15 seconds. It went in, it was doing a real good job. Um, as soon as it started hitting, the flutes though, took the corner straight off the tip and then ripped the tip out. Luckily, the tip didn't stick in the hole. The one that was the best was that tile cutter because of the shape of it. Um, I think it put a hole in about 200 thou deep in about 20 seconds. Loads of water on, reasonable speed, not too fast, not too slow. And I see it went down about 200 thou, 20 seconds ish. So, um, what we're doing now, I'm just grinding down, keep going down, 
as I say, with that little burr on me Dremel. And I'm waiting for delivery of a two, two ball end drills, tungsten carbide tipped, um, because the ball end will be supported right from the bottom of the hole all the way out past the flutes. Six mil again, so we'll just we'll wait and see. When they turn up, we'll see what happens. Eh? Seals and everything's arrived. Um, the inner seal for here, the outer seals come. I've ordered the O rings from Stuart of Barclay Williams. So I'm just waiting for Posty to come, aren't we? I'll crack on with this in the meantime. Back in a minute. Right, success. We've managed to get the tap out. Bah, that was a bloody ball eight, wasn't it? Right, let's have a look at the bits that we've got, eh? So that's the bit that's left of me tap. That is the very bottom of the tap. You can see there where I had, that's how far I had ground down into where the tap, that's the very bottom there. So what I did was, you see in the, in the couple of minutes ago, we went straight down the middle with some very small Dremel tools and we've knackered a good few of them by doing that. They've, the ends have come off them, but what the hell, that's what happens in it. So yeah, so we went straight down through the middle there. So we can balance that on here for a minute. Then what we did, we obviously had the hole straight down the middle and we had thin webs between the f where the flutes were in here. We had the threads that were engaged in the hole and then we had these very thin areas here and I cut through, cut through the webs with that, you can see where the ends come off it, but um, yeah. So I cut through the end which left the four pieces of thread sticking up. One, two, three, four. Whoops, yeah, bugger. We're getting more magnetic on us now. Huh? So then we forced the first one off with the screwdriver. Um, the second one, we second and third one came off because I went down that way and spun split them open, which then dislodged the bottom of the tap. So after we got the first one out, we then managed to separate those two from that and the whole thing came out then. Now, we've had the tap back down the hole, right down to the bottom. Let's have a look down the hole. There we are. all the way to the bottom and again that, <laughs> that was very cautious because what I didn't want was for my tap then to get caught in the hole on a bit of debris as you can see if a bolt goes in full depth there we go that's one of the bolts that I made for um, taking the brig drums off wasn't it so that's why the threads are longer. Now the thread at the top of the hole there, let's get it to there. The thread at the top of the hole there isn't the cleverest. But what I intend to do is to put longer, I think they're inch and five eighths is the ball size length that's required for that hole. What I'm going to do for those, that's the top of this casting and I'm sure the top ones are actually studs on there. The studs that the mud guards, the brackets on the mud guards are fastened onto. So I'll put studs in there that are full depth and we'll make them rather because the, if you buy the standard ones they'll probably only go in halfway. So what we're going to do instead we're going to have some studs made full depth they will go in there 
down to the bottom full depth and stick out the correct amount at the top. <sighs> right, well, so, God, we've been through some gear. My ball end drills didn't turn up. Um, my O-rings from Barclay Williams turned up today. They're here. That was good. My new centre punch turned up. Because I brought the other one. Getting this here, didn't I? So now I'm going to fettle some things up. So, um, so I'm going to now go through my Dremel bits. And I'm just going to throw away everything that hasn't got an end left on it. Let's just hope the other casting cleans up a hell of a lot easier than this one. But if it doesn't, I'll let you know, will I? Right guys, thank you very much for joining me. As always, your time's greatly appreciated. Um, I hope you found this useful. I really didn't. Just a bloody ball ache, you know what I mean? But anyway, as Campbell says, you always find broken studs and their stud extractors and taps in, in these old tractors, don't you? Because at some point, somebody's had a go for repairing a hole. And they've probably been using either one or two adjustable spanners as a tap wrench. Lying on the backs under the tractor. Bound to happen, in it? Got to happen. Right, guys, as I say, thanks very much. Um, hopefully we'll see you in the next one. There will be no yarn this week. This is in place of the yarn, it's getting a bit late uh, and the weather's been absolute crap this week. So, as you can see, hat and coat on and it's now th 3 o'clock in the afternoon or something and it's still bloody freezing. Um, so as I said guys, thanks very much for visiting. Hope to see you in the next video. Sometime next week we'll give this a brush down with a wire brush and we'll see where we're at. Eh? Remember, don't overthink it. It's only nuts and bolts. See you in the next one. Bye now.